Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Oscar Cisneros. So today I'm gonna make a how-to video. I've always wanted to make one of these. So today we're gonna be working on 2002 Chevy Express van. What happened here was the customers complaining about a misfire random on cylinder number five. And uh, what we did was, I'm just gonna walk you through the first process. And then as the video goes on, down. So I have a scan tool, we plugged it in and I'm able to do testing with the scanner. We're gonna do testing with the scanner. So we did. Uh, uh, we checked the number five ignition system. Uh, so we checked the spark plug to make sure that the spark plug wasn't jacked up, and it wasn't. We swapped it with another cylinder, and I swapped the wire out. Uh, the misfire was still present. Um, I also went ahead and checked to make sure that we had spark output coming out of the distributor, and we did. So spark was not an issue here. Uh, we went ahead and hooked up the fuel pressure gauge back here. Keep in mind the doghouse has been removed for access. Hooked up the fuel pressure gauge here. And then we went ahead and ran the uh, injector, injector balance test on this Chevy van with the scan tool. What that does is it actually activates the injector. And while you're monitoring the fuel gauge, you can see the pressure drop for each specific fuel injector. So we can test all eight, this being an eight cylinder. We went ahead and checked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and five was the only one that you can hear the injector activate, but you couldn't, it would not register a pressure drop, which indicates a faulty design. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be removing this upper intake manifold because the spider is inside. And these use what they refer to as a spider injection system or the central fuel injection. We're gonna be converting it over to a multi-port injection system. Uh, following GM's service bulletin procedures and let's do this here's our setup we got our tools ready to go and this is where, where we are going to start we're going to get this air box removed probably position this guy out of the way uh, might not have to actually might just probably start with the air box just to gain access to the front of the intake get all the accelerator cables all the harnesses removed and set up out the way now it's going to be kind of a challenge so we're gonna just remove this here, this here, that there, that guy there. And there might be another one back here. No, we'll go from there. So next, we're gonna go ahead and come down in here and take this clamp out. Disconnect this connector right here and just push down, comes right out. Snap-on makes these really, really cool quarter inch metric sockets that are swivels get them almost anywhere I, I found them to be the best that's kind of hard to do this with one hand but so this should come right out I've got one more connector here disconnect that and again, this is we're doing a 5.7 Vortec engine. We're doing the spider, um, the uh, the spider fuel injectors. Sorry about that. So we got access to the front here. Looks like we're gonna have to remove this throttle cable here. Possibly get this harness out of the way. Um, we got to remove that bolt right there or that nut. And then we should be able to remove the top of this throttle body um, because we're not to access that assembly there. There's also a bracket here, so I actually probably will remove this, just kind of position it, just so I can get a better view of what's going on down in here. So to do that, 10 millimeter. Oops. It's always nice to have a magnetic tray. That way you can have everything nice and handy, ready to go. Power tools make this job so much simpler. I would not, ever since I became a mechanic, I stayed away, see, look at that, came out real easy. These two slots slide right in here, and then just slides out. Just position it to the side, that way you don't have to open up the system or anything. Uh, it didn't seem to do much of an improvement, but we're gonna, we're gonna focus our energies here, and then we'll see what we're gonna have to do as the repair just kinda goes along. The vans always suck just because everything's so damn tight and, and confined in here. But um, as you can see here, there's also right 
there. There's a little pipe. It looks like a PVC possibly. We're gonna have to get that removed. And um, and then we're gonna get get cracking on this. Yeah, it's a little tight. So it looks like there's the bolt right there, that guy. And then the top piece should come out and gives us a little bit more access. Now, working on these vans, what sucks is these freaking chairs are always in the freaking way. So what I'm going to do is look down here. One, two, three, and then four. Just remove them. Get the seat out of the way. Make your life a little easier. It doesn't take that much longer to remove them. You know, just get your set of sockets here. Let me zoom out. Get your set of sockets and then just break these things loose and then get them the hell out of your way. So once you take these four bolts out, there's a harness here. You just gotta disconnect it just to make sure you don't rip anything for the seat sensor. And then the seat lifts just right up. And not to toot my own horn, but look, now you got all this room to get in comfortably in and out of the vehicle. You got all the access in the world. It's a little dirty down here, but no big deal. But look, I have so much room now to get in and out. I don't have to fight the seat. Hops right in. Got the seat out there. Do yourself the favor and just do that. So now we're gonna start disconnecting stuff um, from the from the engine. We're gonna disconnect this connector here. And then we're gonna have to pry that out. I'll do that in a second. Just a couple more connectors here. Make sure you don't break anything. These are pretty pretty fragile. They're plastic. They've been in this, you know, hot environment. The last thing you want to do is break it and then be responsible for having to figure out how the hell you're going to fix it. So we'll figure that out in a second. Got a PCV hose here. Just pry up on it. And if you can't, I'm just going to take it out of the easy side, which is there. Um, it looks like a rat's been living in here. You can see all the, all the crap that they've been bringing into the engine here. So whatever. I have to clean all that up. We don't want none of that to go inside the intake, the intake ports. Get all this crap out of here. There's another connector here. This is the connector here. This is the fuel rail. You're gonna have to disconnect down in here. And, there, sorry, there, and then pop that out. Um, says to remove this, uh, these these spark plug wires from the left side of the engine. Possibly this side as well, just to get a little more access. Now, what's nice about these is that the cap is numbered to, there was eight, two, four, six, and then the wires. If you have original wires, they have numbering on them. So when you disconnect them, see there's five. It's kind of hard to see. That one says seven, but that way you can mix them up and put them in the wrong area. Double check this before you remove them. I'd hate for you to remove them and then f up the cylinder order. So just like that, shake them out. Come on, you don't gotta be cute with it. Just take them out. This guy right here, this is one for the coil. This one probably won't have a number, but it goes directly to this coil tower here. Again, these all have numbers six and on the cap itself. Now the plugs on this car are pretty jacked up. I recommend it to the customer, but they declined. They just want to get the fuel system going because this is a pretty expensive repair this isn't necessarily cheap so you know we try to do the best we can but you know to help people out but you have to get paid too right we don't work for free i remember i used to walk, listen to this guy named grant cardone and he used to have this really cool uh saying who's got my money so a lot of these people, they got your money. Look at that. See, so just lift up, connector comes right up. That's, this is for the multi-port fuel injection module. Now over here, you can see the throttle linkage. See how it moves? And this one only has one cable. I know it's kind of difficult to see, but you see how that cable wraps around the bottom here and then it comes here so what you got to do is kind of hard with one hand but you got to rotate it okay and then you're going to slide this piece out i'm going to do that now so again snap-on has these really cool swivel sockets i want to say it goes from five 
all the way up to 15 millimeter. And what's nice is that they're really short. Now these are expensive, man. These sockets cost me about four, 400 bucks. But you know what? Would you rather pay the 400 bucks and get the job done in 15 minutes? Or, I don't know, about three, four hours trying to get to a screw or a bolt that you just can't access just because of the placement. And the swivel is just so unique. It's just so pimp. Highly recommend you buy it, you know, especially if you're in the dealership. You do the same job the first time. It might take a little bit of time, but by the second, third, fourth time, you're going to zip right through them. And that's where the money comes in. That's where the investment in tools really pays off. I believe we're going to take this guy out right here. I want to say it's about uh, 13. Yeah, 13 mil. So we're going to get it in our ratchet here. You know, if you're gonna do work, be careful that bolt don't fall anywhere or that nut. And if you're gonna do any type of work, guys, you know, just remember that. See, we got it out of the way now. We'll just leave that the way it is. And then there's a bracket actually that holds this throttle cable in place. So, and it's that bolt right there that you have to remove. So, okay, once you get this bolt or this nut removed right here. Then you just pop the top of the throttle body and you slide it forward out the other side. And then on the from the engine side, there's a 10 millimeter here. And there's the other 10 millimeter there that holds the bracket, the bracket for the throttle cable. And then easy peasy, like mantequilla and a hand tortilla, we just pop it right out. So now, now that we got that out of the way, remember the fuel per, the fuel pressure is under a lot of pressure, right? Or there's a lot of pressure inside the fuel system right now. So when you open up these fuel lines, have a rag ready to capture it any residual fuel uh the right way of doing this you're supposed to um uh what is it you're supposed to uh, pull the relay out or something like that run it till the engine dies and then pull. i just crack these lines open a little bit just to kind of get the fuel pressure to just kind of leak down and then we just kind of go from there um so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to take these lines out here and then take these two 10 millimeters off here or eight and then separate the lines from the assembly and then at that point we're going to get some sharp air and we're just going to kind of blow out the sides of the manifold because we don't want to get any type of uh, corrosion or any type or not corrosion but any kind of dirt debris inside the intake we want to make sure this stuff is nice and clean so um let's get that cracking right now and and then from there it's just as simple as removing the 10 millimeters all the way around the intake manifold should come lift up and then you can just pull it right out so right now we're going to start on removing the fuel pressure here or disconnecting these lines relieving fuel pressure removing the other two up in here and we'll start to proceed to remove the others crack these lines open we used a 16 millimeter flare nut or line wrench you want to make sure you don't strip these these line these these nuts right here it's real easy to do um, first, I mean, you always want to break them off with something, and then I use my Yo uso mi pinche ranch mexicano, you know what I mean? So then I'm gonna go ahead and relieve fuel pressure here. I need two hands to do it safely. Make sure you wear safety goggles. Go from there. We got these lines removed. There's a 10 millimeter right here where my socket is at, and then again, there's the two 8 millimeter bolts there. You can relieve fuel pressure here with the Schrader valve. I put a rag and I just pushed it down with a screwdriver. But still use caution. The system can still be under pressure. You don't want this stuff to blow up in your face. But always take precaution. So again, recap. Remove those two nuts. There's a bracket uh, bolt here that holds this bracket down. And then the two line line, line uh, bolts that you got to remove here. And then the assembly that line assembly comes out. Something I just came across. Looks like where the line wrenches hook up here. There's two O-rings. These are damaged. We're going to have to replace those. So make sure you have some O-rings in stock. I'm not sure what the part number is on them. And um, we're just going to have to kind of go from there. So, bam. Right here, there's a plaque connector that plugs into this assembly, this solenoid assembly here. you got to just push down right here. And as you do that, it unlocks it. And then you can slide it out from right there. From right there. I uh, went ahead and removed this little PCV valve assembly here. We'll get over on this side. All you gotta do is turn it counterclockwise and remove. Again, be careful. A lot of this stuff's old. It's been since this, this is from 2000, so this car's almost 20 years old. A lot of this stuff's gonna break. Um, it might not. 
Uh, sometimes you gotta again you gotta replace little things like this, so be prepared. And now we're gonna go ahead and get the 10 millimeters removed from the intake. So there's one here. And again, put them in a nice spot. You don't want to lose them. Sometimes these have different links on them. So when you pull them out, I usually just kind of like to leave them there. And then I'll kind of compare them. Once everything has been removed so that we don't have any odd shapes. I use a magnetic driver as well, or my magnetic socket. Job's actually not too bad. So I went ahead and removed all the bolts that hold down this manifold. There's one right here behind this valve. There's a bracket that holds it in place. There's a 10 millimeter nut. Then you take that out and then there's another 10 millimeter. All the studs are the same size so you don't have to worry about any type of uh, fitment issue. So now once you got all that removed, there's a seal or a gasket in here that, so this is gonna stay inside or it's not gonna move, it's, whereas this is just gonna kinda lift up and then slide out. So there's a seal that you gotta break in here. So I'm gonna use like a little pry bar, a little panel tool, kinda get to a spot where I'm not gonna damage or warp the um, assembly. Look right here, looks actually pretty decent. Again, you wanna be gentle with this, um, kinda, Kind of walk it around, see if you can find a good spot. This probably isn't the right tool for it, so I'll see what I use and then get back to it. So as I was trying to remove it, there's actually a couple more things that I missed. So up on the front, in front of the throttle body, there's another 10 millimeter that's hidden. And then right here, there's a, I want to say it's a purge valve here that's got, it's held down by two nuts and bolts. Make sure you get those as well. Those are same um, 10 millimeter, but they're a different color. Those are more of a silver aluminum. And then once you work it out, you can see the manifold is ready to come out. And bam, look at that. And this this um, plenum here, this gasket, this blue gasket here, it's not an original, I believe, but we're going to replace that. You don't want to mess around with these things and try reusing them. Then you have a vacuum leak, and then you're going to have a world of problems. So anyways, here, my good friends is the spider like that so we're gonna clean all this crap off with some good brake cleaner and uh and then the way these come out you just they have little tabs right here you just pinch them and they come out just like that they're the ears just pinch them and they slide right out now these are all numbered too so the way this thing comes in it's numbered specifically uh, for each cylinder so you don't want to mix these up you want to make sure that you take some video take some pictures so you know exactly how this guy um, lines up and actually here it's kind of hard to tell but they're numbers seven five six and eight so you know which ones they're feeding so if you ever do get lost at least you would kind of know that the firing order is two four six eight one three five seven so um, that way you don't mix them up and you can kind of go from there. But yeah, seven obviously goes there. So we're going to disconnect them, pull this guy out, and we'll see the next step. Here we go. Pull the spider. Keep in mind the regulator goes on the uh, facing towards the passenger side of the block. So that bracket right there has to be removed um, with the new M M you know kit that we're going to be installing. This one's actually a little bit loose. Matter of fact, I think we're missing a bolt even, but um, we'll see if we can get that fixed. So you just pull these tangs out on both sides, and then the spider comes right out. So we're going to go ahead and take this, this bolt off, and then get ready to put our new bracket in. All right, so we got the upper intake cleaned up as much as possible. We put a new bracket right here. These are the holes where the injectors line up. Remember your firing order when you line these up? And once you plug them in, you pretty much can't take them out or you're gonna risk damaging them. So make sure you really think about how you're gonna wire them up uh, in terms of the routing of the injector, of the injectors, you know? So just be careful how you do that. Um, another thing I wanted to point out, the, um, the new ones typically have a new regulator installed already, clutch. Um, if not, make sure you install one. 
and we're also going to again replace the gasket here the new the kit that i bought actually also comes with new o-rings so that's really cool it, and then the spider has a new intake or a, a gasket here so make sure that you really really go over your kits make sure you replace all your gaskets so now i'm going to go ahead and install the spider in here and get it cracking so now that i got the intake out of the car here's the kit number from felpro ms90269 um, it has the gasket for the intake manifold we got this extra gasket here for the um, spider distributor we don't need that but here are the two little o-rings for those fuel lines really cool that they came with that kit um, it's a good opportunity or good time as well to clean the throttle body as best you can this one was black should have did it before picture but it looked like this so we got new um, well not new but we cleaned up the throttle body as best we could um, we also took it off and I also I use this stuff here from BG it's really good amazing product it really just breaks away as much gunk as possible and then uh, the kit also came with a new throttle body gasket so I went ahead and removed and installed the new gasket you might as well do that so um, I'm gonna get some gloves right now the things that you can do is just make sure your job goes right you want to double check everything take your time at this point it's pretty much the reverse process we just put the same uh, we'll put the intake back in um, make sure that this guy's lined up properly um, it's gonna be a little bit um, kind of a press fit here so when you when you first you know make sure you get all these uh, studs nuts whatever or bolts back in and then uh, by hand by hand and then once you got them in hand start working in a criss crisscross pattern from the center of the manifold and work your way out so one two three four five six seven. so you work your way out so you can spread the load evenly um, again this is a brand new spider so it kind it kind of seats in the center here so it might not go in um, at first so you just kind of make sure that you work it down slowly evenly and then it'll just kind of pop into place and then once you do that you just kind of reverse the procedure put everything back together and then fire it up let's do this so now we're road testing the beast check this out got it on misfire kind of hard to see but clear no more misfire cylinder four cylinder number five actually was showing the heaviest misfire uh, it was about three thousand so three thousand just kept rising up to three thousand and then it would reset so now it's 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 gone it's done so we got a confirmed fix we uh suggested a tune-up as well you know spark plugs wires cap and rotor and um, a top end engine cleaner but they declined that at this time so we're just gonna wait maybe reschedule that for another day just let the customer know but for right now this car this truck is fixed ready to go and 